Cornhole Nation, we are exactly two weeks away from the last ACL National of the season, the final chase. I'm going to have top-ranked player in the Northeast Conference, Tim Grew, on the show this week. This is the ACL Throwdown. Like I said, I got ACL Pro and number one ranked player in the Northeast Conference, Tim Grew, going to be sitting down with me this week. But first, my hashtag, Trey's Takes. I got a preview this final chase that is less than two weeks away. Let's go to the three different main divisions that we got and talk about some people that I'm really thinking are going to have a breakout national. First, let's look at doubles. I got three ACL pro teams and one non-pro team that I think will make a big run in advanced doubles. First, let's look at our three pro teams. First, Alan Rockwell and James Baldwin. They have been super quiet this year. Of course, James Baldwin, 2018 ACL singles champion. Rocky and James winning the final chase back in 2018 up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. They won the last National of the Year in advanced doubles. So, like I said, they've been quiet this year. Rocky has had some big finishes in senior doubles, winning a National. James, the highest he's finished is in singles. He made the last four-person playoff at the kickoff battle, finishing in third place. So, They've been close. Rockwell and Baldwin, I think they put together a good national and finished strong. Next, I'm also looking at Ryan Smith and James Washington, a team that wasn't able to make it to Arizona. will start low in the standings, so they're going to have an up, uphill battle, but I think they are prepared and ready for it. Ever since Ryan Smith has put on the cornhole glove, he has been unbelievable. Had a game, a regional against Frank Maudlin, 34 bags in a row. He's been on a tear recently, regional wins, local wins, just absolutely on fire. James Washington, of course, not too shabby himself, so I think they make a good run in both pro and advanced, I'm sorry, just pro doubles. And then the final ACL pro team is a team that I actually picked to win the Arizona bag brawl, but they didn't show up and play together. Dave Sutton and Isidro Herrera, two slingers that have been hot recently. Dave Sutton, of course, just coming up one game short at the bag brawl of making the four-person playoff in singles. He gets double dipped by Josh Gross, who goes on to finish second. So, Dave Sutton throwing hot as Idro Herrera is always deadly. So, Sutton and Herrera signed up to play here in Connecticut. I think they make a big run. Now, my non-pro team that I'm looking out for right now, I was looking at the list of registered teams and one that really caught my eye, Noah Wooten and Courtney Coy. Obviously, Courtney Coy, one of our top female competitors. Noah Wooten coming off a third-place finish at the Bag Brawl in Arizona, as well as a top-five-ranked player in the country. So that team, I think, will scare a lot of people. It's going to have some big wins, and they got a chance to go all the way to the end. So that's my doubles preview. Let's look next at women's doubles. Of course, you can't talk anything women's doubles cornhole without mentioning Christine Papke and Stacia Pugh. Heading for their first, the first ever Cornhole Grand Slam. Looking to make four straight national wins, win all four nationals and women's doubles this year. It will be the first Grand Slam the sport has ever had. It would be a historic moment. So, obviously, Pew and Papke looking for that big win. But who's going to come close to defeating them? That's going to be tough. When I look at the list, i got to at least start with two other teams that have given them a fit at least on their way to go back to back to back. First, we have Courtney Coy and Harley Culpepper. 
They were only three points away from delivering a loss to Pew and Papke at the bag brawl. So you got to think they're going to be close to repeating that performance and per perhaps preventing that first ever Grand Slam. Another team that I'm looking at is another team that gave them fits. Carrie Mittermiller and Brittany Emge are going to be teaming up again. So I look for them, the only team this year to actually defeat Pew and Papke, but thanks to that double elimination format, Pew and Papke able to get a resurgent win and advance to the final. So Mitter Miller and Emge, let's see if Emge can have those incredible shots like she did at the Cornhole Mania in that semifinals match. Man, was she incredible. We'll stay tuned for that. Then finally, the last team that I find a little bit interesting and that has some experience here in women's doubles on the main stage, but new partners together. We have Tiffany Fincham and Cameron Belvin going to be playing together. Obviously, Tiffany Fincham making it to the finals in women's doubles at the Cornhole Mania playing with Tammy Williams. This time, she's going to be playing with Cameron Belvin, former partner of Harley Culpepper, who obviously has had big runs not only in women's doubles, but in singles as well. So that's a kind of a sleeper team that I think has a chance to upset Pew and Packy if they're really on their game. So that's women's doubles for you. And then finally, let's look at singles. So as an individual player, I got three pros that I really want to highlight, and then I've got one non-pro that I want to highlight. First, I got to start with Scott Lane. To have such a dominant performance at the bag brawl back in May, Scott Lane fit winning singles, coming in second in both pro and advanced doubles, winning the Crew Cup. I mean, he just had an absolutely incredible weekend. And so I'm interested to see if he can repeat that performance. Competing in his conference event this past weekend, he went 1-2, and two, only one win at his conference event. So which Scott Lane are we going to get? Are we going to get the dominating Scott Lane from the bag brawl, or are we going to get the Scott Lane that went 1-2 and two at his conference event? Time will tell. One player that I really think is going to have a great week or weekend is Jay Rubin. He has been really, really tough recently. He played with Chris Novi at the bag brawl. They, of course, won advanced doubles, and I really think at times Ruben kind of carried that victory. He threw incredibly well. Those slick bags that he's using, he was just a master of them by the time they got to those finals. So if he can stay hot, stay consistent, stay down the middle, I look for him to make a big run indeed. And then the last ACL pro that I'm looking for to really make a, a, a strong performance at this final chase is Ryan Smith. I mean, the guy, like I mentioned, he has got the glove working for him. I think he's going to make a strong run. I think he's going to shock a lot of people. So watch out for Ryan Smith in singles as well. And then my non-pro that I'm really looking for is the brother of Mr. Ryan Smith, Sean Smith. Someone that's really flown under the radar, kind of been overshadowed by his brother, but I really think Sean Smith has had the talent and had the experience now playing against some top players in Virginia. He's got an opportunity to shock some people. Maybe not the ability to win the entire tournament, but by all means to upset some of our top competitors and make it far into the tournament. So I'm looking for Sean Smith to have a good day as well. That is going to be it for my preview. You can read my full preview article. Go to iPlayACL.com, click on the News tab, and check out my final chase preview article. You can see my full breakdown of the event. Let's get to my conversation with ACL pro Tim Grew as he hypes up this first ever national in his home Northeast Conference. ACL Pro Tim Grew is on the show this week, going in from the Northeast Conference, currently sitting atop those rankings at number one in the Northeast. Tim, I got to thank you first for coming on the show this week, sitting down and talking to me about some cornhole, and then, of course, we got to roll right into it. We got the first ever national in the Northeast Conference. I got to ask you, how fired up are you about this? How fired up are the players that you're playing with about the ACL coming up there to the Northeast? Well, Trey, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be on and represent the Northeast. Uh, it's a big accomplishment for me this year. 
um, you know, coming into the Northeast Conference and having you guys come up with the National, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. My family's really looking forward to it. They've, you know, they've been a big support to me this year, um, traveling wise, but they've yet to been able to come out to any of their events. So they're really looking forward to seeing all the hype that I, I've been talking up about how you guys do such a great job running these events. And uh, so me personally, that's what it's all about, um, letting them come and see an event. And having it be right in our backyard is, is amazing. Um, as far as the other Northeast players co go, man, are they excited. My, my Facebook news feed every day is just blowing up with the event. Everybody keeps sharing it and sharing it and sharing it. Uh, I'm looking so forward to seeing how all those guys do. Uh, up in the Northeast, we actually have a we have a pretty uh, different dynamic, I think, than the rest of the country. We have so many so many groups of players that there every night of the week you can play cornhole, and probably in three or four different locations. So. The best players don't always get to play against the best players around here because they can just go closer to their house. So I'm I'm excited to see how all these guys do with such a good talent pool, all in the same location, and uh, I really look forward to it. I think you'll see some surprises come out of the Northeast, and maybe we'll uh, get our conference a little bit more on the map. Absolutely, and I you know. Being from Massachusetts or were born up in uh, up in that area, and I've had a chance to travel up there a few times. I, I know, uh, or at least since Cornhole got really going up there, I know it's it's really growing fast. And it's one of the fastest growing regions and conferences that we have in the ACL. Let's talk a little bit about you for a second here. You know, when you look at the rankings, you pull them up, you're sitting right there at the top. You're that first name. You're kind of leading. The charge, you'll, as of right now, you're slated to be the captain for the WCO World Cup team. And really, last year, you weren't on the map at all. And it's really just felt like that you really made this transition into a top player in such a short amount of time. Do you feel that it's been that way? Or was it really that we just didn't have a chance to see you over the past couple of years? Uh, well, the the cockiness in me will tell you that it's been that way, um, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I, I've said all along, I've said it to a lot of people, and people have actually said it to me. If if I got the chance to play and I got the chance to travel nationally, I was going to become a name that some people knew. And uh, I've taken that this year in stride. Um, like I said before, my, my wife Molly and my daughter Grace, they've, they've – given me the opportunity to go travel. Um, they've supported me. Um, and not just them, my parents, my wife's parents, in terms of helping out, uh, Grace is only two. You know, they're always coming over to help out around the house, my wife. So when I'm away, I can still go and play. And uh, without all of them, it, it wouldn't have been pro possible at all. And just now, you, you know, it's, like you said, it's amazing. I'll go out to the local bar and I'll run into an old friend from high school and uh, he stops talking to me about how he's following me on Facebook and how he sees in the rankings that I'm number one and to keep going and that he's rooting for me and how proud they all are and you know it just it drives me to keep going um, and with that said I, I wish I could say my my you know going up to the top was because of practice but honestly, I I barely get to play one time a week, so it's uh it's been a ride. I think it's just mainly because I've been able to play in all the big events. Um, I got the like I said, I got the support. I got people behind me, and uh, I definitely don't lack confidence going into a game. Um, I think I can throw with anybody in the country, uh, which absolutely isn't true because there's some people that are really really good. But I won't ever go into a game thinking they're going to beat me. So I think that helps a lot. Yeah, for sure. You talk about the dynamic of the Northeast being just a little bit different. And I know that's one thing that the Northeast Conference is not lacking in confidence. <laughs> yeah, like you, like you said back way back when, uh, that's one thing when you, you mentioned me and Charlie way back before the whole season. You said that they're, not, they're some talkers, and we're definitely some talkers, but we're not the only ones up there. 
<laughs> for sure. And you mentioned your partner, Charlie, Charlie Pru. Uh, you guys have really shocked some people coming in. I know a lot of people um, kind of wrote you off at the beginning of the year just thinking, oh, they're, they're Northeast guys, Northeast. They, they just can't compete yet. But I think you've surprised a lot of people, especially back in Florida. You guys were just a win away from a, uh, an incredible finish. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it was a great finish, but, you know, one more win, and, and, and you're being talked about across the country. Um, you guys have had a good season. So tell me, what's that dynamic like between you and Charlie? What's that partnership like? Yeah, so, I mean, playing with Charlie has been amazing. Um like you said, we've we've had some some up and downs, but that Florida run was really good. And you know, like you said, to be that one game away and to have the lead, and I actually had two bags in my hand, and the opportunity to crush the crush the guys I was playing against, and I threw them both short. And uh, ever since then, you know, it's been tough, but to get over those two bags, but at the same time, knowing how close we were. And uh, that we can definitely get there and shock some people. Um, so it's been awesome. Uh, Charlie now, besides just being a cornhole partner, has become a you know a friend. He's a friend before a cornhole player, which is great on the boards. Him and my, uh, his wife and my wife they are now friends. Uh, our daughters are, are like four months apart. They're like besties. They match every time they come to a cornhole event. They match their clothes and everything. So it, I mean, it's awesome. It's so, it's so good. And, uh, that happened actually. It's funny. I know you just had Jeff Bashand on the uh, last one and he had mentioned Holes for Heroes. Well, Holes for Heroes is where Charlie and I became partners. Um, Jeff and Andy had already did it the year before. Um, so they wanted to partner up. At the time, I was actually playing with Jeff and Andy and Charlie were teammates. And, uh, but they wanted to partner up again. So me and Charlie were okay with it. And, uh, well, ever since then, me and Charlie have been partners, and I think it worked out pretty well for us since it's been about a three-year uh, pretty much domination of the Northeast. And we, uh, we're we not ready to give up that top spot yet. So some teams uh, oh. some teams are trying to come for us, and some teams, are, you know, they've beaten us a few times here and there. But uh, until they can do it for a couple years on end, I don't think we're going to give that spot up anytime soon. You can, I just absolutely love the confidence, and uh, I know you and Charlie are going to be a tough team to beat up there for, for a while now, and that kind of leads right into it. You know, we got two events left. we got the one in your backyard right there uh, down the ways a little bit in Connecticut. The other one, of course, the big one, the 2019 ACL Championships. Whether it be you as a singles player or you with Charlie in a doubles team, what are you looking to accomplish over these next two events? So in the next two events, we uh, we've had you know we've had kind of a roller coaster of a season. Um, we started off on a rail high. We thought we had a a huge sponsorship deal landed. Um, then we go into Florida, and we you know like you said, we were two bags away. We were right there. Um, and then we came home, and we find out that that sponsorship went away. And uh, we've had a pay our way out, a pay our way through for the rest of the season, and we've kind of, you know, we've plateaued at the little hills. We've done a little, did you know, decent, and then we fall apart. And in the pros, we really haven't, uh, we haven't done as well as we'd like to do. Uh, I think the 9 a.m. start for us has been tough. I don't know how all these other players get up the way they do at that eight, that time. <laughs> I don't know if you remember in Arizona we had the nine o'clock single start and I was over in the corner dry heaven before I played my first game, <laughs> and it wasn't because I was nervous. So yeah. it's uh you know so we're mainly we're just we're looking to continue to be the highest placing Northeast team um, at all the nationals. We don't want anybody to take that from us. We want to be the team from the Northeast that's done it. We want to make a, a signature win. Um, I want to take out a big dog. I, that's that's my one goal. I'll, I'll even go one and two, but if that one win is taking out a big dog, knowing that we can do it and getting over that hump, that would work for me. Um, but obviously, every team's going to say it. They want to win. Uh, we do too. I would take any in-the-money finishes again. Um, 
just going on those that run in Florida was awesome. I, and to be able to do it in Connecticut would be even more amazing because I know we'll, we'll have a crowd behind us rooting for us. Uh, Dingus and Lucas, the team that beat us in Florida, they had a pretty good crowd behind them um, down in Florida. And I could see their excitement on their faces. So I want that excitement for us. And we're looking forward to uh, coming into Nationals. We're going to get a uh, start playing a little bit, come into the, Flo- the Connecticut National and try to make a run at this thing. Absolutely. Tim grew on a mission to finish the season strong. I don't know if I need to wish you much luck because you're, uh, I know you're going to generate your own luck, but I will do it anyway. Good luck the rest of the season. we got this one national, of course, the championships. See if some guys get that big signature win that you've been looking for. Tim, thanks for sitting on the show this week and chatting with me. Thank you, Trey, for having me, and thank you for all you guys do, everybody at the ACL. And uh, I also just quickly got to throw a big thank you out to my, my besides my family, my board maker, Mark Ferrioli, um, Mike Riley from Boston Cornhole. He's always a big supporter. So I just want to give those guys a quick little shout-out and say thank you for all they do for me as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gru, for sitting down with me this week. As you can tell, Tim Gru fired up to defend his home turf. He's got the support of friends and family coming up here at the final chase. Thank you, Tim. It was a pleasure. Also, we have the Devour Man of the Year. The first round of that competition going to take place at the final chase. You don't want to miss that on the ACL Digital Network. There's still time to vote for who you think is going to be crowned Devour Man of the Year. You can go to iplayacl.com slash devour to submit your vote for a chance to win free pizza for a year if you select the right winner. So make sure you make sure you go and do that. That is all the time that we got this week for the American Cornhole League. This has been Trey Ryder. We'll see you guys next week.